Now, what happens when you don't meet setup or hold time? So we talked about two things when synchronous clock and asynchronous clock. So when you have synchronous clocks, you can meet setup and hold timing. STA tool will run and meet setup and hold timing. Okay, you need to make sure that at all places you are meeting setup and hold timing. When you have asynchronous clock, STA cannot meet setup and hold timing. Why STA cannot meet setup and hold timing is because there is no fixed phase relationship, and STA relies on fixed phase relationship to meet setup and hold time. So you cannot meet setup and hold time. Now, when you don't meet setup or hold timing, what happens? Your flop becomes metastable. So basically, you would have seen this basic setup equation, right? So you have some delay and some delay here. So what is setup time is, let's say you have a clock here. Your data has to become stable sometime before clock edge. And this is to do with what is the logic present inside the flow. Similarly, after the clock edge, data has to stay stable for some time. And this is known as setup and hold time. If during this window, your transition on the D pin happens, then the flop will become metastable. What is the meaning of becoming metastable is your flop will basically neither be zero nor be one. I mean, at silicon level, it will either be zero or one, but this value is unpredictable. So you have a whole design, right? Let's say you have FSM in your design and going from one state to another state is all a function of, okay, what is the input I'm seeing, whether input I'm seeing is one or zero. If you cannot even predict what, whether this flop is zero or one, your whole FSM will not work. And a lot of logic in the design will not work. So that's why metastability is very, very problematic in the design. And metastability happens because you are not able to meet setup or hold time. Now, when you have asynchronous clocks, you cannot even meet setup or hold time because STA is not even making sure that setup and hold time can be met. So, when you have asynchronous clock, there will always be metastability in your design. Always in case of asynchronous clock, there will always be better stability in your design. Now, how to resolve this? The whole thing which CDC focuses on. Okay. So let's understand a little bit more detail about what actually is metastability. So what is what happens is let's say you have this flop here and this flop here. These are asynchronous clocks. That means there is no defined relationship in their edges, even though there may be same period, then these two edges can come very close to each other. So let's say you have A clock here and B clock here. Your data here, A data here is changing. If this data is changing very close to clock edge so that it violates setup time, what will happen because of that is this flop, B data, output of this flop will become metastable. This metastability that will, we don't know how long it's going to be metastable. That means we don't know how long its value going to be unpredictable. And also value is also not known. So when if this becomes metastable, we don't know it is zero or one and we don't know for how long it will be unpredictable so even that duration is not known okay. so that's why it has to be avoided so basically this flop since you didn't meet setup and hold timing data was sam being sampled very close to clock edge this flop became metastable uh, okay. one question yeah 
So who will define that uh, T setup and a T hold time? Uh, T setup so, and T hold time will come from your library. Uh, okay. And typically, from your cell characterization team will will characterize it across uh, multiple uh, Monte Carlo simulations, typically, and then come up with setup and hold time for a particular or a set of flops. OK, OK. Now, so there are two issues, right? We don't know whether when a flop became metastable. So let's say this flop two became metastable. Two issues. We don't. What is the meaning of being metastable? Is we don't know. It is zero or one. Second is for how long this unpredictable value will be there. We don't know. At the after some time, which is an unknown duration, value will finally either settle to one or settle to zero. So metastability finally will settle to certain value. The problem with that is we don't know how long that duration is going to be. And second, whether during that duration, you, your design is not predictable in terms of whether at that point of time, value is 0 or 1. Now, think of this as this is one of the typical example, like think of a ball sitting on the top of the mountain. In theory, it is possible that, OK, it can stay in this stage, like neither 0 nor 1, that duration. Uh, duration can be indefinite. But practically, it is not indefinite. After some time, because of the noise in the signal, noise in the environment, the wire or the signal will finally be settling to 1 or 0. The challenge is we don't know how long it will take. And that is, again, a biggest problem. Right? You cannot wait. For example, let's say you have a cell phone and some, some of the flops inside that cell phone is metastable. You, you can't wait, right? So you have to, the design has to work in a predictable manner. And metastability causes it to not work in predictable manner. Now, what, so now what another impact of metastability is, it does not stay there. Okay, so we saw problem metastability is that value is unpredictable. Second, duration for which it's going to stay metastable is not known. And third problem which happens is, well, let's say this flop became metastable. Now, if this flop is driving other logic in the design, metastability can propagate in the design. Now, if once metastability propagates in the design, it can cause further logic to become metastable, typically flops, and then your whole design can fail, not just one flop in the design. So another very, very bad impact is metastability can cause unknown value to propagate in the design. And that, again, is a problem because not just one flop is becoming metastable. Wherever it is propagating, all that can be metastability. Now, so how do how how to take care of the metastability? So let's go back to the basic. Metastability is happening because we are not meeting setup and hold times. Now, when there are asynchronous clocks, there are no defined phase edges. So STA will never be able to meet setup and hold. So that means when you have asynchronous clocks in the design, there will always be metastability. The only thing you can do is you cannot avoid it. It will never be zero. You can neutralize it to some level. OK, so metastability between asynchronous clocks cannot be avoided because you cannot meet setup and hold time between asynchronous clock. The way is it can be neutralized or probability of it causing a failure can be reduced. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Okay. So typically, to avoid 
and be careful with the term avoid basically metastability can never be zero when you have asynchronous clocks in the design it can be avoided to a certain level and that is where synchronizers come into the picture so what, let's understand what is the synchronizer and how does it try to avoid the metastability not make it completely zero okay now basically when you're transferring data between two clock domains there are two kind of scenarios which are possible okay? so you have one flop and you're passing data which is another flop let's say this is clock c1 and this is clock c2 and c1 and c2 are async when you're transferring the data it is that one criteria you want to make sure is whether every data you transfer from here has to be captured here or is it possible to miss some data there are both kind of designs which exist one kind of scenario will be every signal passed must be sampled in the second domain or some it or some of the data can be missed sometimes it is not necessary to sample every value but accuracy is more important that you what you are capturing is a correct value there are both kind of designs which exist and we'll we'll talk about both of these designs now when you're trying to synchronize you have to keep in mind where, which one of this situation it is and accordingly design it and we'll take few examples from there to design it simplest synchronizer which basically tries to uh, which avoids metastability in both of most of the cases is just to add a one additional flop in the received log domain so let's say you have this flop this is transmitting data and this is capturing data and this clock a and clock b are asynchronous simplest synchronizer is just add one more flop so you had this first flop add one more flop which is in the same domain as receive clock which is clock b here and that works as a simplest synchronizer the simplest synchronizer is just two back to back flop nothing in between no logic in between and that acts as a simplest synchronizer let's understand how this actually avoids metastability so let's understand right so let's we go back to our original case where this flop was there okay. so basically let's say this clock is changing this data is changing very close to clock now what will happen is this b data one will become metastable now since b data one has become metastable but this clock has not come so let's say this clock edge comes is coming here let's say b data one is initially metastable but before the clock edge during this period before the clock edge it actually stabilizes so basically it comes out of metastability within one clock cycle then the next flop which will capture data is capturing a stable data and it's because it is stabilized before the setup time so this flop b data 2 is not metastable and so move forward in the design no metastability propagate okay so adding one additional flop has resolved the metastability that metastability no longer exists in the design but it relies on assumption that first flop which is b data 1 in one clock cycle has resolved metastability right we had initially talked about is for how long a flop will remain metastable that duration is not known so we're making an assumption here assuming that duration is less than one clock cycle of clock b 
then the flop resolves metastability and then the second flop is no longer metastable so that way with this assumption this synchronizer resolves the metastability is it always going to be resolved resolve the metastability no that is why it's it is not a solution which will work 100% of the time. Okay. So let's understand. Let's say this A data is changing very close to clock edge. And what happens because of that is this initially V data one will become metastable. Now, in previous case, it has settled or stabilized before the clock edge. But let's say it does not stabilize before the clock edge so that means the second flop is also capturing a value which is metastable which has not stabilized which basically is violating setup and hold in that case b data 2 is also metastable so even though you had a synchronizer still the metastability was not resolved so it is possible in some cases, this will still not resolve metastability. Now, the question which comes up is, how do you then design? Like, if you know some of the cases it will not resolve, so how will the design work? And we'll come to that. 